Bubble Bobble began life as an arcade game and was released back in 1986. Starring brothers Bubby and Bobby, whose girlfriends are kidnapped and they themselves turned into dragons named Bub and Bob, this platform puzzle game was a huge success and received home console ports plus a direct sequel named Rainbow Island, the story of Bubble Bobble 2. This Switch exclusive revamp of the classic series has four player multiplayer, but does it do the classic name proud? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now let's find out. For those who have never played it before, you take on the role of Bub, Bob, or one of their friends, with the basic aim being to clear each screen of the various enemies. In order to help you do this, you are able to blow bubbles, and should the bubble reach an enemy, they will become encased within it. Touching the trapped enemy will see them fly off and exit the screen. Do this to all of the enemies and you will move on to the next level. This is Bubble Bubble boiled down to its most basic form, although there are other intricacies at play. First of all, any enemies that are touching whilst in bubbles, either directly or via other bubbles, will chain together once cleared. This means that you can be strategic in when you capture each one and even blow further bubbles at them to push them towards other enemies in order to try and increase your score through this chaining technique. Defeated enemies will drop fruit and collecting this will improve your score further still. If you touch an enemy whilst they are not trapped in a bubble or get hit by an enemy projectile, you will lose a life and the amount of these that you have is stated at the top of the screen. You do return instantly after a death with no loss of current progress within that level, unless of course you lose your final life, in which case you will be brought back to the title screen and will need to restart the level from the beginning. The game is structured into five worlds, with each world containing ten levels, the final one of which is a boss battle. These battles have you memorising patterns whilst hitting the enemy with enough bubbles to finally capture and defeat them. This will reward you with an item that can be equipped to your character. These items will grant you special skills that can be used a finite number of times per stage, and include being able to shoot bubbles over a further distance, or bubbles that have a secondary attack pattern once they burst. Completing a world will give you an overall score and a star rating out of 3, leaving potential for replayability and there is also the challenge of collecting the extend letters. Throughout each world, the letters E, X, T, E, N and D will appear in some of the stages. Should you manage to collect them all and spell out the word extend, you will power up the item you receive at the end of that particular world, allowing you to use it more often within each level. If you are finding things difficult and lose too many lives on one level, the continue with invincibility option will become available. This makes you invincible for the whole level, and it's a shame that they went from 0 to 100 here. Perhaps giving an option for temporary invincibility first, rather than basically giving you a free pass through that level, would have been a good compromise, but to be fair, it's only ever a concern if you press it, and I'm sure most people will be able to navigate the game's difficulty without really needing it. Now the biggest gameplay mechanic in Bubble Bubble 4 Friends is the titular 4 player local co-op mode. Whilst I couldn't test it with 4 players, I did manage to play it with 3, with my wife, my daughter and myself participating. You each share a pool of lives and any power items unlocked by one player in single player mode are available to all players in multiplayer, which is a nice touch. I can see this being a good time with players of a similar skill level, strategically rounding up the enemies for the highest possible scores, and even playing with two players who were not as skilled, it was still fun and they both really enjoyed the game which was nice. The main issue I have with the gameplay is that it just plays it too safe for the majority of its runtime. It's not really until about World 4 that you start to see any truly creative levels, and at this point I really started to enjoy the game, but it just took too long to get there. The game is also pretty easy for the most part, Obviously clearing a level in a way that chains most of or all of the enemies together for a massive score is where the implicit difficulty lies, but even so, the level layouts just aren't challenging enough. I can't quite put my finger on why, although I think it has something to do with a lot of the levels being stretched horizontally, unlike the original where due to being on an arcade cabinet, the levels were more vertical in nature. This seems to make it harder to navigate and dodge enemies than seems to be the case in this newer version, at least in my opinion anyway. Completing the game will unlock the option to play through in hard mode. The level layouts remain the same in this run through, although enemy types are changed up, with end game enemies being added to earlier levels, some enemies moving faster and more aggressively, and the time limit to collect the extend letters being reduced. This is a welcome addition, and it's just a shame it takes beating the campaign to be given this sort of challenge. 
A very nice touch indeed is the inclusion of the 1986 original, available right from the start of the game in all its 100 level glory. It acts similarly to the Hamster or Journey Turbo arcade games on the Switch in that you can press the R button to add as many credits as you want and is available in two player mode as you would expect. Control wise, either the left stick or the D-pad can be used to move your character, B jumps and either A or Y will fire a bubble. L or R can be pressed to use a special move and holding down whilst in the air will perform a stomp move. The gameplay is the same fun bubble bubble that has existed for the last 30 years, but it plays things way too safe for the most part and can be blitzed through in quick time and scores 14 out of 20. Controls do the job well and never cause any sort of issue and score 17 out of 20. Visually, Bubble Bobble has been given a revamp with 3D character models traversing a 2D plane, and whilst I wouldn't necessarily say it looks better than the original, despite that game's primitive style, it does have its own charm and displays all of the cuteness and colour you would expect. Each world is themed around a different area of the bedroom, which means worlds revolving around trains as you visit the train set, or space as you move towards the mobile hanging from the ceiling. And whilst this sounds really interesting in theory, perhaps bringing the mundane alive with the power of magic, what it really equates to is a blurred out background picture of this specific area of the bedroom, and then a level made up of bricks that have a vague connection to the theme, but not much else. The themes just play no real part in the actual level at all, and in fact the first time where the theme became overly clear within a level's layout was during the space world, which is world 4, and remember there are only 5 worlds in the game. This was such a major disappointment and really made the whole idea of the enchanted bedroom at night completely redundant. Audio wise the game treats you to an updated rendition of the classic bubble bubble theme upon starting up, and this theme is also used in early levels. For the most part, the music is cheery and upbeat, and actually quite charming. The major issue with it is that the same track will play on loop throughout one whole world, or at least up until the boss battle, which means no matter how pleasant it is, it will start to grind on you after a while. Sometimes the music is played using different keys, as if it's being purposely distorted, this was obviously an artistic choice, presumably just to mix things up at times, but it didn't really work for me personally, and I much preferred the more traditional tracks. Visuals are of a decent standard, and they do the job well, and they get 14 out of 20. Audio, on the other hand, is perfectly pleasant, and does everything you'd expect it to do, and also receives 14 out of 20. Bubble Bobble 4 Friends costs £35.99 or €39.99 and strangely doesn't release in America until sometime next year. It includes 50 levels and whilst that may sound like a lot, in a game like Bubble Bobble, a fair few of these levels can be breezed through in about 30 seconds and suddenly it doesn't sound quite so impressive. Yes, it does include the original with its 100 levels, and that's much appreciated, but in some respects the inclusion of the original makes the missteps of the new entry all the more glaring. 4 player local multiplayer is a positive, as is the hard mode, but this game is still hugely overpriced. There is a physical version, and usually this provides a saving grace with me being able to report a cheaper alternative, but in this case, the physical version is more expensive than the digital, with £37 the cheapest I managed to find it. Value scores 8 out of 20. To conclude, I want to make it abundantly clear that I enjoyed Bubble Bobble for Friends more than the score will probably suggest. It is another dose of a classic arcade title and provides a good amount of fun. However, when measured against every one of its parts, there are certain aspects that do let it down, most predominantly the price. Once the physical version inevitably drops in price or there is a good sale, then this would easily be a 70% plus game. But at its current price, it's difficult to recommend even if you are a huge fan of the franchise. Bubble Bubble for Friends gets a switch up score of 67%. Thank you everyone as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. We have our weekly Switch update video released yesterday, so please do give that a watch if you haven't done so, as well as a review from Mark on Children of Morta, I'll put the links to both of those in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, a huge thank you to all of you for watching our videos, 
Take care, and until next time, happy gaming. Yeah. <laughs>